The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake was an undersea earthquake that struck an area of the west coast of the Indonesian island of Sumatra on Sunday, 26th of December 2004, at 7 o'clock, 58 minutes, 53 seconds local time, followed by a tsunami. The earthquake was caused by the subduction of a part of the Indian tectonic plate beneath the Burmese tectonic plate, causing a series of destructive tsunami waves along much of the Indian Ocean coastline. The event killed 230,000 people in 14 countries and the giant wave inundated coastal settlements up to 30 meters high significantly disrupted the economies of the affected areas, severed social ties and caused enormous trauma and economic hardship to millions of people. It's therefore one of the deadliest natural disasters ever recorded by mankind. In addition, the wave hit tourist attractions such as Thailand, where tens of thousands of foreign tourists from all over the world were present, and the event therefore received significant global publicity. In this series, we'll take a look at the impact of the wave on the hardest hit areas and tell you some stories related to the event. But let's start from the beginning. Welcome to the next video on the Top Topics channel, which begins a series of videos on the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami. The hippocenter of the main earthquake was approximately 160 kilometers of the west coast of northern Sumatra in the Indian Ocean, north of Simelu Island, at a depth of 30 kilometers. The earthquake was result of decades of accumulated pressure between the Barma and Indian tectonic plates. The release of this tension caused tremors of a staggering 9.2 magnitude, making it one of the three largest earthquakes in history. The earthquake was unusually large in geographical and geological scale. An estimated 1600 kilometers of fault surface slipped about 15 meters along the subduction zone, where the Indian plate slides under the overlaying Barma plate. Slip of the plate didn't happen immediately, but occurred in two phases and lasted several minutes. Seismographic and acoustic data indicate that the first phase involved a plate rupture about 400 kilometers long and 100 kilometers wide. This is the largest rupture that has been caused by an earthquake. The plate rupture occurred at about 10,100 km per hour and began off the coast of the Aesek Peninsula and progressed northwestward for about 100 seconds. After a brief pause, the ripping continued northward towards the Andaman and Nicobar Islands for another 100 seconds. This rupture had the effect of raising the seabed by several meters over a horizontal distance of hundreds of kilometers and pushing an estimated 30 cubic kilometers of water above the ocean surface, which was the triggering mechanism for the destructive tsunami waves. This mass of water immediately began to spread in all directions. However, the main energy of the waves was thrown in the west-east direction corresponding to a linear source of the earthquake from south to north. This greatly increased the geographical area in which the waves were observed, extending as far as Mexico, Chile and the Arctic. The sustained rise of the seafloor also significantly reduced the capacity of the Indian Ocean, causing a permanent rise in global sea level of an estimated 0.1 millimeters. Simply put, 
the displaced water above the surface of the Indian Ocean spilled out into the rest of the world's ocean, causing devastating flooding, tsunamis, when it collided with the coastline. The energy released by the earthquake was equivalent to the equivalent of 550 million Hiroshima atomic bombs and could cover the energy consumption of the United States for 370 years. This massive release of energy slightly altered the Earth's rotation and shortened the length of the day by 2.68 microseconds. It also caused the Earth to wobble slightly on its axis by up to 25 millimeters. Some of the smaller islands to the southwest of Sumatra, which are on the Barma plate, have shifted southwestward by as much as 36 meters and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands have shifted southwestward by about 1.25 meters and have sunk one meter. The massive undersea landslides triggered by the earthquake undoubtedly had an impact on the formation of the destructive waves with up to 15 meters high submarine ridges collapsing and creating a new ocean trench. This gigantic undersea earthquake was measurable all over the planet but was only strong felt in nearby Indonesia, particularly in the province of Ace, where it caused great tremors that claimed hundreds of lives and caused considerable destruction to infrastructure and buildings. However, the worst was yet to come. A destructive wave was already spreading mercilessly across the ocean, ready to unleash a work of destruction the world had not known yet. The first country to be hit was Indonesia, the subject of the next episode in our series. Friends, we got to the end of the first episode. I hope you enjoyed it and you're looking forward to the sequel. It will definitely be worth it. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching and see you at the next episode.